on with SAS similarity effect or simply side angle side similarity effect. So in this theorem, it states that if one angle of a triangle is congruent to one angle of another triangle and the sides that include these angles are in proportion, then the two triangles are similar. So let us have this figure to prove SAS similarity. So let us do it first deductively. So let's have one angle of a triangle that is So let's say that angle H and angle K here are the congruent angle of this triangle. It states from the second statement, it says that the sides that include these angles, if this is our angle, angle H, should consider the side GH and the side HI, since it is where angle H was included. Next, in angle K, we will consider the side JK and the side AN. So it states here that this side should be in proportion. So it means we will create again a ratio to have the corresponding sides of these two triangles in which AJ corresponds to HG and KL corresponds to HI. Therefore, our proportion will be KJ over HG is equal to KL over HI. If this is the case, then we can conclude that triangle GHI is similar to triangle GAN. So that is for deductive. So this time, let us prove the condition in SAS similarity. Given that angle H is congruent to angle K, KJ over H is equal to KL over HI. Let us prove the triangle GHI is similar to triangle GHN. So, let's have again the column proof. Let us have the statement number one. Let M be a point on side HG. So, we have here point M such that HN is congruent to KJ. So, for our reason, we will have to find construction. Let us have number two statement. Let us draw line to M parallel to side G I. So we have here point M. Let us draw a line in which M and here is parallel to G I. For our reason, it is because of parallel posture. Next, statement number three. We have angle M is congruent to angle G. This one is congruent to angle so for our reason, it is because of corresponding angles. So since we have here parallel lines, that way we can specifically use this thing. Next, number five, we have angle H. This one is congruent to angle K. For our reason, it is came from the event here. So we have here two angles that are congruent from this two triangle. Therefore, we can say that triangle MHN is similar to triangle GHI by AA similarity. Let us have statement number 6. HM over HG is equal to HN over HI. It is by proportionality theorem or by the definition of similar triangles. So let us have statement number 7. We can say that KJ over HG is equal to HN over HI by substitution. Remember in statement number 1, segment HM is congruent to segment KJ and which I replace HM here by KJ. And the rest follows. Next statement number 8, we will have KJ over HG is equal to KL over HI. This one came from our event. Statement number 9. Using statements number 7 and 8, we will have HN over HI is equal to KL over HI. Remember that these two ratios 
are both equal to KJ over HJ. Therefore, by transitive property, they are also equal. Statement number 10, we will now say that HN is equal to KN. This all sides. HN and KN. Why? Because of multiplication property of the quantity. If you notice in number 9, their denominators is equal to HI. In which, by using this MPE, let us multiply both sides by HI to make the denominator be equal to 1. Leaving the numerator HN equal to KN. Let's have statement number 11. We have triangle MHN is congruent to triangle J, A, N for the reason of SAS congruence. Since we have here side, angle, side, and side, angle, side congruence. Next, angle J here is congruent to angle M. Let me use the same markings for that. For the reason of C, P, C, P, C or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are Statement number 13, we have angle J is congruent to angle G. Since we know from statement number 3 and statement number 12, angle M is congruent to angle G. So therefore, angle J and angle G are also congruent by transitive property. For our last statement, we may now conclude that triangle GHI is similar to triangle JKL by AA similarity. Let us have the following examples for SAS similarity theorem. So let us have example number one. We should have side angle side. So let us have first the angle of this one. Since these two triangles are right triangles, we can say that angle B and angle C here by the markings is equal to 90 degrees and they are congruent. So let us move on with the sides that are proportional to one another. Since ZX corresponds PA and YZ corresponds C, then our proportion will be XZ over BA is equal to YZ over C. This one. Substituting the values of each sides, therefore we have XZ is equal to 10, PA is equal to 50. Simplifying this fraction, we will came up by dividing 10 and 15 by 5. Let us have the other ratios, which is yz over bc, in which that one is equal to 24 over 36. Again, let us simplify 24 over 36 by dividing both numerator and denominator by 12. Therefore, the lowest term will be 2 thirds as well. Since the two ratios here are equal, then we can conclude that triangle A C is similar to triangle X, Z, Y. Another example, example number two. Given this figure, let us check whether these two triangles here are similar. So as for our angle, we can say that angle P is congruent to angle P by vertical angle P. Since triangle P, Q, O and triangle R, Q, S shared angle to here. So we already have the angle. Let us move on with the sides. Consider that PS corresponds P and RQ corresponds O. Therefore, our proportion will be QS over P is equal to QR over OQ in which QS over P is equal to 18 over 36. Simplifying this function by dividing both numerator and denominator by its greatest common factor, then the simplest form will be one half. Let us move on with the other side. QR over OQ. Therefore, we have 21 over Q. In which the greatest common factors of this numerator and denominator is 21, then the simplest form of this one is one half. Since their ratios are equal, we can conclude by such similarity theorem that triangle PQO is similar to 
triangle S R. So that's it for S A S seminar. Well, that's it for our tutorial. Thank you for watching. See you again in the next video.